car guy here at Airtex Corporation in Fairfield, Illinois. And what does Airtex Corporation do? Well, they manufacture fuel pumps. You might have uh, even bought one of these at some point in time. Today, we are going to, we are fortunate enough to be able to tour their facility and not only find out how these things are made, but if I can sneak it in a little bit, we're also going to take a little bit of time to talk about the diagnosis of a faulty fuel pump, whether it's causing a no-start condition or perhaps a performance issue. That would be great. I think that'd be useful information for you. So without further ado, I'm not going to stand here and talk about what I'm going to do. Why don't we just do it? You need to put on safety glasses when we go in here. See, it's not just working on cars where you have to do this stuff. Sometimes just walking around work you have to wear these. Why don't we go inside and see what they have? My first impressions when walking into Air Texas facility is that it's big and full of cool looking machines of all shapes and sizes. They even have a big crane they can use to move those big machines around with. Very cool. This is the warehouse facility that houses many of the raw materials that are used in production. It is also used to store some of the finished parts that are sent to different parts of the plant for final assembly. More on that later. In addition to making electric fuel pumps, Airtex is also the only manufacturer of mechanical fuel pumps in the United States. Perhaps they'll have me back at some point to take a closer look at those. For now, I think the best way to show you how they put these electric fuel pumps together is to head to final assembly and show you what takes place moments before the finished product is packaged up and sent to you. Final assembly of the unit is organized into small groups that work together to assemble the finished fuel pump assembly. The first step of assembly in this line is to install what looks like the fuel tank pressure sensor in the electrical connector for the top of the unit. These are pressed into the top of the unit with a small press and also checked for leaks at the same time. This top assembly is actually molded not far away and is done with this machine. A worker removes the freshly molded part, trims it, marks it, I always wonder where that green dot came from, and then checks the part for leaks before sending it off for final assembly. That brass fitting you see in the outlet is actually pressed into the finished part. Back at the assembly line, the next step is to take the steel support rods and press them into the upper assembly. This is done with a specialized press. After that, it's handed off to the next worker for further assembly. I had the chance to see how these support rods are made earlier in the tour. The rods actually start out as a large spool of hollow steel wire. The wire is fed from the spool to a machine that cuts it to the specified length. The cut pieces are then sent to another machine that is hand fed by a worker to have the ends pressed into the final shape. After that, they're sent out for final assembly. There are a couple of things the next worker does in the fuel pump assembly line. First, she puts a finished pump into a press to attach an outlet hose to the fuel pump outlet. This ensures that the hose is consistently sealed to the pump outlet. A leak here would be a bad thing. She then takes the unit that was assembled earlier and puts it upside down in a jig while she installs an insulator to the outlet side of the pump. She then places the pump into an assembly so that the other end of the outlet tube can be pressed into the upper assembly in the same way that it was pressed onto the pump. The assembly is then checked for leaks while she installs the filter assembly onto the next pump in line for production. She also puts a new pump in the press and installs its outlet pipe in the same way as before. Jumping back to the assembly that has just been leak checked, she presses the pump into place and installs its electrical connector. After that, the unit is passed to the next worker for further assembly. The next worker clips on the outer shell which contains a potentiometer for the sending unit, the part for the gas gauge. She then routes the wires and installs them into the connector. I got to see these outer shells being born in another part of the plant. They get pooped out by this big machine and then sent over for assembly. FYI, new plastic parts are hot. Just saying. Back at the assembly line, we see a worker installing the wires and contact arm of the sending unit assembly in a small press. Next to her, the almost complete unit is getting its final touches. 
The electrical connections are made to the upper part of the unit and the rubber plugs are installed into the base of the assembly. It's then connected to a power supply and tested. The whining sound means it's working. The final filter element is installed and the unit is placed in another jig where the arm for the float unit will be attached to the outside of the final assembly. I got a chance to meet the machine that makes these float arms. He didn't talk much, but he was a good worker. As before, they start life as a spool of wire, which is fed into a machine, we'll call him Fred, that bends and cuts them to the perfect shape. After the machine cuts the wire, it falls onto a conveyor and is fed to a table where a worker then performs the final assembly and packages them up to go to the assembly line. This last part is one of my favorites, packaging. The completed unit is put into a plastic sleeve that is then hooked to compressed air. The compressed air fills the sleeve and surrounds the pump assembly with a cushion of air. Once the packaging is full, it's sealed off and the ends are curled in and the unit is placed in its box, ready to be shipped. The boxes are placed on pallets to be shipped out and eventually into your hands. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, my thanks to the people at the Airtex Corporation for uh, showing us uh, a little bit more about what goes into what goes into this box. So um, thanks to them for that. If you want more information on the diagnostic procedures, when you open up this box, you can take an engine out of the car, but I can't open the box. You can go here to visit the technical resources um, in case you have or suspect you have a fuel pump problem. Go through that diagnostic procedure. Take some time. Invest in time, not your money. Don't just go out and blindly buy stuff. I mean, they put those resources out there for a reason. I make these videos for a reason, and we're going to put them together and make a better world for us all. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or find me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, let's see what else I have to tell you. Oh yeah, that whole thing I say during every show. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. See you.